the Djibouti and Eritrean border conflict between the forces of Djibouti and Eritrea occurred between June 10 and June 13, 2008. It was triggered by tension which began on April 16, 2008, when Djibouti reported that Eritrean armed forces had penetrated into Djiboutian territory and dug trenches on both sides of the border. The crisis deepened when armed clashes broke out between the two armed forces in the border area on June 10, 2008. During the conflict, France provided logistical, medical and intelligence support to Djibouti, but did not participate in direct combat. Background The currently in force 1900 boundary agreement specifies that the international boundary starts at Cape Dumera at the Red Sea and runs for 1.5 kilometers along the watershed divide of the peninsula. Furthermore, the 1900 protocol specified that Isle du Mera immediately offshore and its adjacent smaller islets would not be assigned sovereignty and would remain demilitarized. Djibouti and Eritrea had twice previously clashed over the border area. In January 1935, Italy and France signed the Franco-Italian Agreement wherein parts of French Somaliland were given to Italy. The actual border at Ras Dumera, though, was never fully demarcated save for a broad agreement that the northern slopes of Hill were Italian and the southern slopes were French and this arrangement sufficed whilst France and Italy remained in control of the area. However, the question of ratification has brought this agreement and its provision of substantial parts of Djibouti to Eritrea into question. In April 1996 they almost went to war after a Djibouti official accused Eritrea of shelling Ras Dumera. Eritrean movements in Ras Dumera region. In January Eritrea reportedly requested to cross the border in order to get sand for a road, but instead occupied a hilltop in the region. Djibouti, in a letter to the UN calling for intervention, claimed new maps put out by Eritrea showed Ras Dumera as Eritrean territory. Eritrea denied it had any problems with Djibouti. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Melis Zenawi said on May 15 that the row was a threat to the peace and security of the whole Horn of Africa, and said, Ethiopia would secure their trade corridor through Djibouti in the event of a conflict. Ethiopia has relied on Djibouti for access to the Red Sea since Eritrea's independence. Eritrea's president Isaiah Safwerki denied sending troops into the area and added they do not have any problem with Djibouti. Armed clashes On June 10, according to Djibouti several Eritrean troops deserted their positions fleeing to the Djiboutian side. Djiboutian forces then came under fire from Eritrean forces demanding the return of the deserters. Djibouti called up soldiers and police who had retired since 2004 in response to the fighting. Eritrea dismissed accounts from Djibouti as anti-Eritrean. A statement from Eritrea's foreign ministry said it would not get involved in an invitation of squabbles and acts of hostility, and claimed Djibouti was trying to drag Eritrea into its concocted animosity. According to French Colonel Ducre, French soldiers in Djibouti provided logistical and medical assistance to the Djibouti army as well as providing them with intelligence. Clashes between the two forces reportedly continued for several days before Djibouti's military announced on June 13 that fighting had subsided. But on the same day, President Galaire was quoted by the BBC as saying that his country was at war with Eritrea. 44 Djiboutian soldiers were killed and 55 wounded during the fighting. According to Djiboutian estimates, 100 Eritrean soldiers were killed, 100 captured, and 21 defected. Djiboutian President Galaire declared, We've always had good relations but they aggressively occupied part of our country. This is an aggression we are resisting. By 2008 the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency estimated the army was 14,000 strong. International Reaction Arab League The League of Arab States held an emergency session in response to the fighting and called for Eritrea to withdraw from the border region. France the French Foreign Ministry said it was highly concerned about the fighting. 
The French Defense Ministry announced they were increasing their military presence in Djibouti and increasing their support for Djibouti's army. Following the border clashes, the announcement also said France was preparing to deploy a forward logistics base and a land force near the zone where the clashes took place, adding that its military has stepped up air surveillance over the border to monitor the activities of Eritrean forces. Reports also indicate that additional naval forces are being moved to the region as well as an additional team of military surgeons. French Defence Minister Hervé Morin also held discussions with Djibouti's Defence Minister Aurore Kifler Ahmed, promising to strengthen the French military presence in the country in case there is an escalation in the current border row, also to reaffirm the very great concern of France over the recent border incidents. Morin, according to diplomatic sources, has reassured his counterpart of the full support of his government, at the same time calling for a diplomatic settlement of the issue. The two nations have a mutual defense agreement. United Nations The United Nations Security Council called on both sides to exercise maximum restraint and re-establish dialogue. United States the United States State Department issued a press release condemning Eritrea's military aggression, saying it represented an additional threat to peace and security in the already volatile Horn of Africa, and calling for Eritrea to accept third-party mediation on the border dispute. Eritrea responded to the statement accusing the U.S. of instigating conflict in the region. The American embassy in Djibouti advised citizens against traveling to the northern Djibouti where Ras Dumera is located for safety reasons. African Union The Peace and Security Council of the African Union urged Eritrea and Djibouti to exercise the utmost restraint and to resolve the dispute through dialogue including fully cooperating with an omission sent to the area. However, Eritrea, unlike Djibouti, had not yet accepted the mission. Eric Het Simon Special advisor to Prime Minister Meles Zenawi of Ethiopia told Reuters, Ethiopia firmly believes that such unwarranted action should be stopped. Immediately and peaceful and diplomatic solution must be sought for the problem. Aftermath on June 24, 2008, the United Nations Security Council held a meeting at their headquarters in New York to hear a briefing of the situation, as well as statements from the Prime Minister of Djibouti Mohamed D. Laeta and the Ambassador of Eritrea. A UN fact-finding mission was sent to the region and issued a report saying the standoff between Djibouti and Eritrea could have a major negative impact on the entire region and the wider international national community, noting while Djibouti has pulled out of the disputed area Eritrea has not. The fact-finding mission was not allowed into Eritrea by the Eritrean government. The United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 1862 on January 14, 2009, urging dialogue between the two countries to solve the issue peacefully. The Council welcomed Djibouti's withdrawal to positions before June 10, 2008, and demanded Eritrea make a similar withdrawal within five weeks of the resolution. In early June 2010, Djibouti and Eritrea agreed to refer the matter to Qatar for mediation, a move that was praised by the African Union.